Hey y'all. Today, Blizzard held another Diablo 4 campfire chat focusing on the upcoming 1.1.1 patch. This is in a direct response basically to a lot of the feedback that we got from the Season 1 patch that we got uh, last week that did not go over very well within the community. They had a uh, developer campfire chat last Friday going over um, a lot of the feedback that they got and what they're going to try and do to mitigate this in the future and plans that they're going to be uh, making going into the future as well. And one of these things is going to be the patch 1.1.1, which is going to bring in a bunch of class rebalancing, a lot of buffs to classes, especially barbarians and sorcerers, but actually every class is getting buffed in some way. Um, there are some other changes in here that I'm going to talk about. I'll try and keep this brief, do the best I can. Uh, I'm going to keep it informational in the first kind of half of the video, and then I'm going to end it with my thoughts and other things like that. So if you want to hear my feedback, uh, and my thoughts, you can go check that out in the video timestamp description or in the video player. You can skip ahead if you want to. The patch notes for this patch are going to actually release next Wednesday. It's August 2nd. But the actual patch itself is going to be released August 8th. So they're releasing the patch notes for us a bit early so that we can kind of go over everything that's going to be included in the patch. And we can provide any like last minute feedback um, if we need to regarding the patch. So we kind of know what to expect going into the patch the following week. Big thing for this patch is going to be the class rebalance. I'm not going to go read through every single line that they wrote uh, in this like kind of slideshow deck that they showed off here. Um, I'll kind of go through each one a bit, uh, just generally speaking, uh, but I'm not going to like read every single thing because it's going to take me kind of a while to read through like every single thing for every single class. But like I said, generally sorcerers or barbarians are going to get the most amount of buffs going into this patch 1.1.1. Generally, for Sorcerer, they're kind of buffing a lot of things to be more generally usable. This is actually true for every class uh, buff that they're going to be introducing, where they're shifting things to be less conditional for skills and, and aspects. Um, so you don't need, you know, the, the joke was like, if you had lucky hit something and you had to be healthy and the enemy had to be healthy and you had to be fortified and it had to crit when the enemy had to be burning, like they're kind of trying to move away from these like hyper specific conditional aspects to be a lot more usable generally speaking for example i believe the uh, flickering firebolt used to generate mana on burning enemies but now it generates mana on any enemy uh, I, I believe this was how that used to work uh, i'm not a sorcerer player i don't remember offhand but they're doing this in a lot of uh on every class to be including changes that are going to make things a lot more usable for multiple types of builds you know, there's going to be more mana here, more damage on Fireball. Chain Lightning is going to bounce. Um, when it bounces off anything, you get bonuses related to damage or uh, extra mana, which I'll kind of show on the next slide. So, like, passive gain buffs. They're also adding um, some condition, uh, a boss conditional on some uh, effects. For example, both bonuses are also granted for three seconds when you hit a boss with a critical strike for S2's ferocity. Um, there's a change for Barbarian as well. So that you can also benefit from some of your passives and other uh, skill choices when you hit a boss as well, instead of just uh, how it used to work. There are going to be some changes to Paragons for Sorcerer. They're moving a lot of the uh, defensives to Sorcerer to buff those from the Paragon board instead of um, giving them just like flat armor or, or some other uh, damage reduction or whatever. So they're adding a lot of the extra damage reduction from these rare glyphs here, and as well as a lot of the rare nodes on the Sorcerer's Paragon boards are going to be granting extra damage reduction as well. So this should help a lot in helping sorcerers feel a lot more tanky. So these rare nodes here uh, will grant uh, bonus life as well on these uh, rare nodes down here. Uh, a lot of their legendaries are getting changed. The big one for me is going to be Serpentine Aspect. This used to get, give you the additional Hydra but reduce its duration. This is now being flipped to actually increase the Hydra's duration instead of reducing it. And thus also affects your Hydra enchantment uh, effect. This is nice to see that they're kind of like toning back a lot of the um or at least considering to tone back a lot of the negative downsides of some of the aspects on sorcerer um so that they just are better now so that's good to see more burning damage on these aspects aspect of three curses is actually looking to be pretty good if you're running meteor or fireball just because this has a humongous critical strike damage you get a flat 20 to 40 percent crit damage and if you hit a healthy enemy then you get even more crit damage so I believe this used to only work on healthy enemies, but now you just get a flat crit strike damage and it happens to be even more against healthy enemies. So that's good to see. Some moon speed buffs, more uh, bolt lightning, uh, increased damage. It kind of gets covered up there, but yeah, increased damage for this bolt lightning aspect. 
more mana, more bounces for chain lightning, more movement speed. This new Veer's uh, Mage Lord's aspect, so the Veer's Mastery uh, Key Passive will now grant you damage reduction for each close enemy. Up to 60 to 90% is a wild amount of damage reduction. 90% is pretty bonkers. So this actually might be very good uh, if you can if you end up being like a close range sorcerer, which a lot of sorcerer builds do end up being pretty close range. So 90% is a hell of a lot of damage reduction. That is insanely high. Um, Gloves of the Illuminator, so this is getting uh, slightly uh, changed. So the damage penalty from the bouncing fireballs from this these pair of gloves is going to be reduced, so it should be dealing um, more damage because the damage reduction penalty is less. Um, but they're also changing the uh, distance of each bounce, so it's actually should be more consistent that you hit an enemy uh, with at least two bounces of the fireball, which will make it deal more damage. So if you hit something with two bounces of the fireball with these gloves, it should be a damage increase now instead of it being kind of a wash or even a damage decrease for even using these gloves at all so this should be uh, a lot more usable now I'm not saying it's going to be meta or anything but it's at least like kind of maybe usable now instead of it being kind of <laughs> garbage before all right next up we move on to barbarian so basically every barbarian basis skill is going to be granting even more fury now which is good to see Double Swing is getting a base damage increase from 40 to 50%, which will keep scaling up as you put more points into Frenzy, or, um, sorry, Double Swing. That's good to see. Uh, rupture is getting uh, the damage bonus on the Enhanced Rupture. That's the uh, Blood Explosion when you use uh, Rupture. Uh, charge is getting a damage increase and the Vulnerable Duration increase. Um, Violent Upheaval now works on bosses as well. Uh, that specific uh, node. Uh, more damage reduction. Um, every Barbarian key passive is getting buffed except for Unbridled Rage. So Gushing Wounds now scales with more crit damage and more overpowered damage. Unconstrained is getting more damage and Walking Arsenal's damage bonus is also going up by 2 seconds, 6 to 8 seconds. So that's a buff for my build specifically, so that's nice to see. Uh, more damage bonuses, uh, damage buffs for Barbarians um, just across the board. Charge getting buffed as well. Uh, more damage reduction for the Earthquake builds. They're trying to kind of bring up Charge and Earthquake as like viable uh, alternatives to Barbarian builds. So damage reduction while in Earthquakes is getting buffed and damage bonus and Earthquakes is also getting buffed for those uh, related aspects. A number of uniques for Barbarian are getting buffed. So the Fields of Crimson's damage bonus is going um, kind of flat value for its damage uh, explosions going up. Um, the increased damage from enemies in the pools are going up and they're also granting bonus crit strike damage instead of cooldown reduction on the Fields of Crimson Sword as well. So it's nice to see, especially since the crit strike damage scales even more now with the Gushing Wounds key passive. Hellhammer's uh, fire damage is going up. It's also going to last for one extra second. And they're also removing the damage to crowd control with bonus crit strike damage. I will... Report back on Hellhammer because I would like it to be good for the build. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough of a buff for Hellhammer, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, Robin Lani's Magnum Opus is going to be getting vulnerable damage instead of physical damage. And the 100,000 Steps Boots are going to be granting uh, movement speed instead of uh, damage against uh, stunned enemies. So this is lovely to see because part of the reason I didn't like 100,000 Steps is because of the lack of movement speed. And then the Battle Trance Unique is going to be getting cooldown reduction instead of basic skill damage and also uh, grants a higher attack speed bonus for your other skills. I believe that was the end of the Barbarian section. Okay, so Rogue, not as much going off of Rogue because they're already a pretty good class. Uh, but they're buffing a few things uh, for kind of like their uh, well, their basic skills. Uh, Caltrop damage is going up. Poison Trap damage is going up. Uh, Supreme Rain of Arrows is going to add a uh, knockdown effect for... Uh, three seconds. Uh, lucky hit chance is going up for victimize and the siphoning strike, so that'll make it healing a bit more consistent. As well as uh, damage reduction against dots is going up as well. Uh, aspect of elusive menace uh, no longer requires uh, close targets, and then the aspect of quickening fog will now uh, drop smoke grenades that will reduce dash's cooldown. Um, they're also changing a couple of uniques, so wind force is now going to be getting uh, vulnerable damage instead of all stats, which is a pretty big buff. And the word of, of Hakan Amulet is now going to be getting cooldown reduction instead of ultimate damage. Druids are getting uh, similar changes to Barbarians in that they're getting more spirit generation, which is good. And they're also trying to add a bunch of buffs to uh, companions. So wolves across the board are just getting buffed for their damage. Uh, Raven damage is going up. Uh, Rabies damage is going up. So they're trying to um, sort of support companion slash poison druid being a thing. I don't imagine this is going to beat out like Tornado Druid or uh, the Shred, like 
teleport around everywhere druid build is probably gonna beat that but uh, if you wanted to run companions they're at least going to be like okay maybe now we'll see uh, a few legendary aspect uh, buffs as well going up for druid and class mechanic overload um this should be part of their um i think it's part of their uh, spirit bones i think might be wrong but a uh, lucky hit chance for that effect is going up uh from 20 to 40 percent which is good to see and then last up we're gonna have necromancer so bone spirit uh enhanced bone spirits getting uh extra second for their cooldown reduction which is good uh change of the paragon legendary board slightly um you know reduced requirement for willpower and scales the bonus damage a bit more empowering reaper uh, now has a chance to summon a pool of blight uh, this used to only uh, scale when you crit something but now it's just when you hit anything i believe um so it's just to be more generally usable uh change the lucky hit for exposed flesh aspects so 10 percent chance to generate essence when hitting a vulnerable enemy this was just more I forgot what this originally did, but it should be more generally usable now compared to what it was before. And then a couple aspect changes, damage increase for this, more resource generation. Uh, hulking aspect is now a utility instead of a resource aspect, and they're also uh, buffing the uh, chance for the golem effects to spawn or uh, to happen. And the unique Greaves of the Empty Tomb is now going to be getting uh, bonus movement speed instead of intelligence. So also trying to incentivize uh, people using these uniques by actually giving them the stat they want, which is movement speed, which is good to see. A couple other minor changes they're going to make uh, regarding class balance. So minions are now going to be taking less damage from the Balrog Fire Breath and as well as elites with Fire Enchanted, uh, the Electrified Obelisk and the Shock Lance. That's good to see. Minions should not die to those things as much. There's one malignant heart change, so we're going to change heart of spell breaking. Uh, this used to give you like damage resistance for like whatever element recently hit you or something like that, but now it's going to be a lot more broadly usable so that when you take any elemental damage, you now then just get a flat 10 to 20% damage reduction for 5 seconds. So this is going to be uh, a lot more usable, so that's good to see. I believe that was uh, most of the class balance changes, yeah. So, oh, one more thing. Oh, miss one more thing. Uh, Temerity is going to be getting a bit of a, not really a rework, but just a couple of changes. So all stats on Temerity is not going to be max life. Barrier is now actually based on max life, which is good. It wasn't before. You would think it would be, but it's not. Uh, so you should be able to get a bigger barrier from Temerity, especially with the max life stat. And the barrier from Temerity should actually work properly with other barrier effects, which is crazy to me that it didn't. Uh, but yeah, now properly accounted by conditions checking for the player having a barrier. So like damage while having a barrier, you know, X, Y, Z while having a barrier should actually work properly now with Temerity. So I'm I'm kind of stunned that it, it made it through uh, without actually checking for this properly. So, oh, well, that it is what it is. Not much to like visually show on the stream anymore. Uh, well, there's one more thing. Uh, the Nightmare Dungeons are actually going to change. So one of the other things coming into patch 1.1.1 is going to be nightmare dungeon density is going up so there should be more enemies within nightmare dungeons uh going forward when the patch hits this is actually gonna be true for hell tide as well hell tides will also have more enemies there's a couple places on the map for hell tide that are that already has like pretty good enemy density um so they're not going to be buffing every hell tide zone to have more enemies but they're buffing basically everything that, that needs more enemy density for certain areas of the map for hell tide as well but every nightmare dungeon should be getting more enemies as well which is a plus in my book so they kind of show an example off here so this is a current uh nightmare dungeon example um of the nostrava deep Wood. this I mean, the enemies are not going to always spawn these exact locations but this is generally where they spawn in at uh roughly so this is kind of where the game is right now today if you logged in and went to this dungeon this is kind of the general enemy layout but if we skip ahead a little bit you're gonna see that there's going to be more enemies so there's a lot more enemies like here and up here up over here over here like those are just way more uh red dots if i kind of skip back right so this is before this is the current patch current game right now and then afterwards it's going to be way more enemies so you can kind of flip back and forth see that there's just way more red dots um so this actually will be a xp bonus increase as well essentially just because you're going to be having more enemies to kill meaning you get more XP, so this should help uh, leveling feel a little bit faster as well uh, when running Nightmare Dungeons, which you should be doing anyway to level uh, once you're in World Tier 3 and definitely in World Tier 4. Again, this also applies to Helltides, but it's not going to be every Helltide since some Helltide zones are going to already have good enemy density. 
there's a few other kind of minor points um, from the stream that I wanted to bring up. I'll kind of just let the video play out at this point. Bosses in World Tier 3 and World Tier 4 are going to be getting an HP increase because they feel like they don't really scale very well uh, for the player's power. But in exchange for that, bosses in dungeons will have a guaranteed legendary drop uh, starting from level 35. So even before World Tier 3 and World Tier 4, dungeon bosses are going to be guaranteed legendaries from level 35 and onward. This is also true for Legion events. So if you're level 35 or up, Legion event chests will always have a guaranteed legendary in them, which is Good to see treasure goblins are also getting a guaranteed chance for a legendary drop they actually talked about this on stream and they said it's a currently a 50 percent chance for treasure goblins to get uh, a drop of legendaries but they're going to change that to be a 100 percent chance for legendaries so cool works out in my book i like that they briefly mentioned that respec costs across the board are going to be reduced by about 40 percent they're respecing into other builds if you wanted to do that it should be a lot cheaper now they didn't mention anything about making it easier to respec because I know respecing an entire Paragon board is like kind of annoying, but the cost of doing that should be a lot cheaper now. Cool. They are adding an extra stash tab via gold. It's just going to be an extra like 400,000 or 500,000 gold or however much it is costing uh, for that extra stash tab. That'll be for Eternal Realm and Seasonal Realm. So go buy that stash tab if you need it. Um, there was a minor change, but kind of an annoying change where the leave dungeon teleport cast time was five seconds and uh, up from three seconds to how it used to be. Uh, they're changing that back. They realize like, yeah, yeah, that change was kind of not necessary and really not needed. So going back to three seconds. Cool for me. Uh, they're aware that some nightmare dungeon affixes uh, suck. So they're going to actually be removing them temporarily until they have uh, better solutions to implement them in the future. So that's going to include resource burn. Backstabber and Cold Enchanted Elites. Uh, those modifiers on Nightmare Sigils are not going to be dropping anymore going into patch 1.1.1. You can still find Cold Enchanted Elites in your dungeons, but the actual Cold Enchanted affix um, on the Nightmare Sigil itself, where it says like uh, Elites have Cold Enchanted uh, in this dungeon or whatever, that's being removed. So your Nightmare Dungeons generally should be less annoying. Most people were already salvaging these resource or these uh, affixes anyway, so they're just going to remove them because no one's running them because they suck. That's good to see. Uh, they had a Q&A section towards the end of the video in the end of the stream as well. I'm not going to go over every single question, but there's a couple of things I wanted to kind of highlight. Um, they generally acknowledge that resistances are in a bad place right now, but that they're looking into it. And But they need to be careful about it because they don't want to make resistances too strong so that if you're like fighting like a fire boss and you have like max fire resist and you take like zero damage, they don't really want you to be like immune to damage via resistances or anything like that. Um, so tr they're trying to find a balance and a way to make that work for the game. I don't know what that looks like. They didn't really provide any like examples or any anything about that, but I'm hoping that they can figure something out so we'll see they acknowledge that crowd control is a bit of a problem especially on higher levels again no real concrete um plans for that yet but they're very aware that the crowd control can be pretty overwhelming uh, especially in higher level content they briefly brought up that they are aware that mounts are kind of annoying and very tedious um, they even mentioned that the random blockades out in the open world they intended that to be like you would get ambushed by enemies and you would dismount and you would do you would fight the enemies and you need to get back on your mount or whatever and go on your way uh but they realize that that's pretty tedious and not very fun to uh deal with so they are looking into uh improving that in the future again no real concrete changes there but they are aware of that feedback they talk a little bit about overpower and again also acknowledging that overpower just does not stand a chance against like crit and vulnerable damage in terms of like uh scaling your character um so they are wanting that to be improved in the future, but there's uh, more changes related to that um, that they are talking about internally. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, that was pretty much most of everything that they talked about on the uh, campfire chat today. Yeah, overall uh, thoughts, uh, good. I'm gonna go with good. I uh, talked about this on my stream today uh, while I was watching it and after I watched, finished watching it. But here, here's the thing, right? So. I'm of the opinion that I know that the season one patch was not very well received and I think for good reason there were a lot of faults with that patch and the way that they presented that patch was not very good. The perception of that was extremely negative and I don't think you know Blizzard is like actually secretly not at fault like they didn't do anything wrong like no they definitely messed up with like the timing of the patch and 
um, not really communicating any of these changes with us in advance. Like, you know, there was a lot of things that went pretty wrong with that season one patch, but I will give the dev team a lot of credit for being very candid and open with the community that is very much at their throats to be like, what the fuck was that patch? And for them going back to back weeks, uh, last Friday and today, talking about the season one patch, talking about things that they're making you know, going into the future. Like they are very aware that there are issues with the game and they're really trying to iron things out. Um, you know, I, I would prefer to not just stay mad about that and try and give them benefit of the doubt and give them a chance to um, kind of course correct the ship a bit because honestly, Diablo 4 is a fun game. You know, I've had a lot of fun playing the game. I look uh, forward to playing it regularly still. I'm enjoying my barbarian leveling. And even with these sorcerer buffs, like I actually want to go play a sorcerer now after reading a lot of these changes. Like I'm actually kind of excited to uh, give sorcerer a real try because I haven't played it yet uh, in the live version of the game. So, you know, I, I would rather be optimistic about the game, not just because I like making content on it, but also because it's just, I, I don't want to be another negative voice in the space. Um, so everything I've heard today on the stream is thumbs up in my book. You know, there are still things like I, I kind of wish the itemization was a bit more interesting. I wish there was a bit more maybe like meat to some of the end game, you know. But like right now, I think the game is like a, in a pretty solid place. Just needs a, a bit of like refining and tweaking and some additional content going into future seasons. I know season one was a bit light. I don't think the malignant hearts are like that interesting in terms of like obtaining them. It's basically just like go kill elites or whatever. But... Uh, I'm hoping that season two has a lot more kind of meat on its bones in terms of like systems and, and other kind of more engaging aspects of the season. But uh, I think for a first season, it's okay because uh, some of the malignant hearts are actually pretty damn good, honestly. It's just that the, the way you acquire them and the like malignant tunnels and all that stuff is like not really that engaging or interesting to uh, interact with. But the actual powers themselves are some of them are actually really strong. So um, I've been having fun with season one. And the dev chat today kind of reinforced me that I am looking forward to the future of the game because I can at least respect that, yes, they did make mistakes. And I think it's important to criticize them when necessary, when they do make mistakes. But I also want to give them credit for being very open and candid and being like, yes, we made a mistake. This is how we're going to try and fix it in the future. And this is what uh, we're going to be doing to remedy all of that. So I am overall positive on the dev stream today. Uh, I've said it. I'm kind of repeating myself at this point, but I, I appreciate the very open uh, streams from them so far since the game has launched, and I look forward to more stuff from them in the future. Obviously, if they keep blundering and making mistakes, then I can uh, not give them as much benefit of the doubt, but right now, I would rather be more optimistic about the game than pessimistic. So anyway, that's all for me. That is the Diablo 4 Campfire Chat about patch 1.1.1. I will have a video going over the full patch notes on Wednesday and I'll probably have some uh, maybe patch feedback or anything like that uh, the week after. Check out my Twitch streams. I'll be streaming this weekend pretty regularly. I try and stream a lot of my Diablo 4 stuff throughout the week. Check that out in the description. Uh, link on stream, twitch.tv, Kira Dext. And yeah, hope you have a wonderful day and thank you for watching.